Okay, my name is Richard Orahood III, and I was born in Cape Canaveral, Florida. I've lived in Florida my whole life. I came from a family that broke up when I was only uh, two years old. My mother and father were, I mean, anytime they were around each other, it was like cats and dogs kind of thing. They were really, really um, awful to each other. You know, I did get to see my father, you know, at least like once a month or twice a month. He'd come pick me up. He was also um, an alcoholic, not so much that I knew how bad until I, you know, became an adult, and it um, was a result of, you know, his 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 health deteriorating. One of the things that sticks with me for the rest of my life is that every night before bed, when I would go visit him, he would always open up the Bible. You know, he stressed so much, "Do unto others as you would have done unto you." and really, really quoted me Jesus' words as a, as a guide for just basic everyday living. And that always stuck with me. Around 10 years old, I was at a Christ Fellowship when they were just a single location before they became this massive church they are now. And they asked, who wants to accept Jesus? And um, I just felt the Holy Spirit at that young, young age. And they had like dramatic uh, concert lighting. And it was just, it was a really, um, I really felt the Holy Spirit and I accepted Jesus. I felt led to go up there and that's when I, you know, started my relationship with Jesus. The last year of high school, I had a lot of questions about the world and what I believed, you know, deeply. And I still believed in Jesus, but you, you know, you're 18, to 20 years old, you start asking a lot of questions like, what do I really believe? Do I really believe this with all my heart? Right after high school, the summer, after high school, I was hanging out with my friends. All of a sudden, we started seeing this thing in the sky, and it, it looked like a meteorite or something. And I, at first, I thought, "Well, this meteor, this is a big meteorite or something that's going to like blow up in the woods." But um, it it turned into what we could only um, decipher was a was some kind of spacecraft. I couldn't believe it, and either could he. And he was kind of a real. F free spirited guy and he was he was trying to call this thing over and I felt fear it, it did nothing but give me fear it came towards us and at that point I started praying I said I don't I don't want to I don't want to know any further about this just make this go away Lord make this go away I don't like this and it it kind of turned again and it went towards the uh, the woods uh, in Jupiter Farms out towards where the nature preserve is God is not a God of confusion, and it confused me. And so I started kind of asking God, like, is, is there life on other planets? Is that, is that real? Because I never really believed either other way, but it kind of rocked my faith a little bit and had me questioning God. I started c trying to uh, look into what other religions believe. You know, I started looking at what, is, what do the, the Muslims believe and what do the Hindus believe? And I didn't practice any other religions. I just wanted to know why I believed the truth that I believed. The more research I did, the more uh, I, I gravitated towards the living word and how perfect it is. I asked the Lord, I said, convict me, like convict me, convict me a hundred, you know, convict me 110% uh, that Jesus Christ is the truth and that, uh, that the, the living word is the living word, like convict me 110%. You have to be careful when you ask for that because God might put you through some experiences that uh, you don't want to have. It was South Padre Island, Texas in the off season where everybody goes out there to spring break and everything, but it was off season, we were working on the bridge. We started having um, paranormal experiences in the house, um, you know, shadows flying around, things that didn't make sense, things that were not explainable. And I started asking the local people, you know, is, you know, what do you know about this area, this block? And everybody around there said, oh yeah, the whole block. Everyone I talked to is like, there's haunting activity around here. I got pushed around in my sleep one night in the darkness. I woke up and I didn't, I didn't even know it was the middle of the night. And I mean, just, just crippling fear, not knowing what's going on, being kind of shoved in the bed. And I said, I said, Jesus, I called upon you. I knew immediately. I said, if anything is going to make this go away, Jesus will. And I said, Jesus, make this go away. Make this stop. And it stopped. And I felt like, you know, peace, like, you know, like I was being hugged. And I just went back to sleep. Well, a few nights later, or maybe it was a few, a week or so later, the individual that stayed in the bed next to me in that room, there was two beds. 
he well he didn't tell anybody but he woke up in the morning and um he didn't he didn't know jesus he was he was a pretty lost guy i wasn't living correct either but i knew jesus and he told me something last night strangled me and uh got over top of me i thought i was going to die you know i did some praying over the house some things continued to happen but uh but it it didn't scare me anymore cuz i knew that that was the last thing i needed to be like okay god like i i trust you fully that you're who you are jesus is who he is i i believe 110% i'm sorry i ever even asked you to convict me you know around the time that i was in texas uh i had met my future wife um who was one of the only people uh women that i had met that was going to church and she got me going back to church we got married and we had two children together two wonderful children but i continued to to use marijuana like like you know i thought it was an antidepressant or i needed it to to but my anxiety never went away i was still kind of the same person dealing with anger issues and i went to the consecration prayer and i got on my knees and i sobbed my eyes out and i and i apologized to to jesus i said i'm sorry that i've been replacing you uh for all these years with with marijuana I, i don't i don't need it anymore and he took that desire away from me god is is so gracious and graceful to us if you ask you will receive and it might take even if it takes you 20 years i mean i still feel guilty but god doesn't want us to feel guilt and it's it, there's no better time than now to to live right and go down that narrow path i kept trying to walk around